What's good, YouTube and Instagram? Welcome to my next video on Sterling on Cinemas. That's Cinemas with an S. And today, on my the next series, the next episode on my Way Back Wednesday series, I will be giving you my review on Set It Off. Before I begin, if you are new to this video, don't you forget to like, share, subscribe. This is if you're on YouTube. Click that bell to keep up with later videos. And most importantly, watch. Because I know that you know you don't want me to set myself off. And the same thing on Instagram. Follow, like, share, and comment on the section below if you have anything to say. Or if you have anything to say about the film. And most importantly, watch to the very end. Because I know the people of Instagram. I know my followers, which I have more followers than I do on, on YouTube. I know none of those people want me to set myself off. Let's get to it. All right, all right, all right. After being fired from her job as a bank teller, Frankie, played by Vivica A. Fox, begins working as a at a janitorial service with her friends Tishan, played by Kimberly Elias, a single mother, Cleo, played by Queen Latifah, who is a boisterous lesbian, and Stoney, played by Miss Jada Pinkett Smith, the pioneer trailblazer, who is dealing with the recent death of her brother. The women are struggling with their finances as a collective, so they decide to start robbing banks. At first glance, the group is successful, but they soon attract the attention of an obsessive detective played by John C. McGinley. Now, here's my take on the story for Set It Off. At first glance, Set It Off seemed like a revenge story that is shared by four women that may be connected to this revenge plot in some way. But rather, it is a story about what financial desperation can lead to. The story is very solid from beginning to end. It is more, it is one of those crime dramas that starts out rough, but it gets more intense as the film transpires, as it goes on. It doesn't take long for us or the characters to get mixed into these bank heists. I know that my last re review on a hood movie in the Way Back Wednesday series, which was Juice, I'm sure y'all saw my review on that. That was good, right? That was good. The movie and the video. That that review saw me compare it with another film. But I am the kind of person, if I do, excuse me, because I'm the kind of person that likes to compare other films with the film that I'm currently watching now with other great movies. So anyway, in case you didn't see that, I encourage you to watch my Juice review if you haven't already. But if you've seen my review on Juice, you know that I said that Juice saw, Juice showed us that how most young people who grow up in the projects get involved in the life of crime for the sake of power and easily lose their grip on reality. Now, Set It Off kind of, kind of presents this same aspect, but that is not the basic backbone behind the evil schemes that each of them are doing. Set It Off presents more of the why rather than the what and the how. Because see, the what and the how is very simple. It's very direct. What they are trying to do is rob banks in order to support themselves financially. And the how is they do it through precise planning in a very seemingly heist-like fashion with the aspects of disguises and getaway cars and distractions. The current condition that each of the women are in makes are in makes their why more justifiable rather than the basic why. We all should know that the idea of choosing crime over hard work is not the best way to go. Cause I know anybody, like anybody who's anybody who thinks like that easily turns to crime because that's that's why it's called fast money for a reason. Like they, they tell you the good stuff, they tell you all the cheap they wanna get they wanna Earn you win you over cheaply by telling you only what you'll get rather than what the consequences of that will be. Like everybody always keeps saying, "Hey man, if you come if you come with me to sell these coke, I'll give you five million dot five hundred million dollars." But they don't ever tell you you're gonna go to jail, even though it's common sense. You're clearly gonna go to jail for doing something illegal. But this is the solution right here: turning to crime whenever life gets hard. That most people from the hood turn to because it is easy. And it is a guilty pleasure when it feels like you have all the money in the world and you're over everybody. Like you have like you have authorities over your authorities. Overall, Set It Off is yet another cautionary tale that reminds us how easy it is to get caught up in that crime or to even die for it. So if you have any friends that, that have gotten in that lifestyle or even think about getting in that lifestyle, 
warn them, show the, show them movies like this so that they will be aware of the consequences. And we have a lot of people talk about this almost every day. Like this is one of the biggest problems with our generation. We lose, like I said, this is about juice, but this is, this is even with set it off too. Like we tend to think that crime is the only way to get through life and, and to take money from other banks seems to be an easy route. While it seems like guilty pleasure, while it seems good and powerful to have all the money in the world, money don't buy you everything. Money is not going to keep you from going, robbing banks is not going to keep you from going to jail. Like having all that money in the world is not going to keep you from, from facing the judge and facing crimes, the characters. Now, for most of you who watch my videos, if you watch my videos for real, you know that for sure I like to talk about the characters in this movie. Here we go. One of the things about the characters in this movie that intertwines with the story so well is that one thing that causes each of them to set it off. It looks so simple to tell a story, but listen to me. It looks so simple to tell a story about four women who steal money because they they lost their jobs or whatnot. The personal ulterior motives are better than the clear reasons that they choose to rob. First of all, let's make this clear. The lack of money is the main reason as to why they rob banks. Like that is the reason right off the bat. They do this because they need financial support. However, there is something in each of the ladies' individual lives that compels them to volunteer, that compels them to go after that cheddar cheese. For Jada Pinkett's character, Stoney, I believe that now... Tell me if I'm wrong about this in the comment section below, but I believe that she robs the first bank to help her brother be able to afford to go to college. I don't know if they robbed the first bank after his brother died or before, but of course, Jada's, Stoney's, excuse me, Stoney's brother dies in the first 30 minutes of the movie, and after being with Blair Underwood's character, Keith, for some time now, she gets encouraged to escape this tight, intense ghetto atmosphere and to be free in a more wide open space. And this right here serves as a more ulterior motive, a new one so that replaces the old one, while at the same time helping her to grow with the growth mindset and mentality. For Vivica A. Fox's character, Frankie, makes she makes each of each heist beneficial for the group, seeing how she's an ex bank teller. Also, I'm pretty sure she gets involved in these crimes to seek as revenge for the managers firing her from the bank since she had connections with the perpetrators in the opening act that robbed that bank that she worked at. For Queen Latifah's character, Cleo, who was the lesbian rapper, the lesbian gangster, she doesn't really have much to lean on when it comes to these bank heists because she pretty much enjoys the guilty pleasures of the crime. Now, for Kimberly Elise's character, who... This is her first film, by the way. TT, she needs, she just needs money to take care of her only son. She's the only person in the group that adds more of an innocent factor and less of a vengeful attitude. But see, the fate, the fate that each of the four women face is inevitable. They manage to be successful for the majority of the time, but eventually they face the consequences. Rotten Tomatoes gives. Set it off a 68% score. Still fresh. If it's over 60, it's still fresh. I don't know if I mentioned that already. If it's over 70, it's certified fresh, pretty much. Now, agree to disagree. Set it off may not be as brutally honest, brutally compelling, excuse me, not brutally honest, brutally compelling as Boys in the Hood or as thrilling as Juice, but set it off contributes more of a relatability factor to the average hood struggles with its straightforward story, rising tension, personal goals, and an incredible ensemble led by Jada Pinkett. Oh, man, she deserved, she really, let me tell you something. She deserved that Trailblazer Award and whatever year that was at the MTV Movie Awards. But anyway, I will give this movie 7.8 SOs out of 10. So that is my review on Set It Off. You can let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section below. How do you compare it to other hood films that you've seen and if there are any any other great hood films that i've seen that i that i have not seen that i may know about that you know about for sure that you've seen please recommend it to me in the comment section below i want to be very sure before i watch it even if not you know you you can do your part as we as we have our relationship as youtube youtuber and viewer you know what i'm saying but anyway 
that that is all of my movies for this week. I hope y'all have a great rest of the week. See y'all next week with my next collection of movies. Bye.